Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a video today because I had to finish the tracks, had to do some work and I was a bit sick in the morning as well but fortunately I could finish all of the tracks faster than I thought I would. So today we are going to be doing some sound design and I want to teach you how to make fat, powerful and nice tech house bass. We'll be using two of my favorite VST plugins, Diva and Serum. Okay, let's start with Serum. I'm honestly more into Diva right now because I like its simplicity, that fat, warm and analog sound character. And it really depends on the taste, on the sound you want to get. Both synths are great, but they are just slightly different and that's not a problem. I think you can try both of them and choose the one which fits you best. And the first thing you need to think about before you start is what kind of bass do you want to make? And there are, I think, two types of bass you could make. The first one is the puncher one, the uh, which we are making right now. And if you want to make a punchy bass, you should use lower sustain ratios. So I think minus 24, minus 18 should work very good. And the release is usually pretty short. It's really up to you how you want to make your bass, but you need to make sure that you have enough space for your kick and for your bass. So if you have a longer bass with uh, some long notes, your kick should be shorter and vice versa. Let's try and listen how it sounds. That sounds pretty good, I think. I'm going to keep the envelope and now we need to find the right waveform for our base. Let's try and use a square. Yeah, sounds pretty good. And now we could try and use some of the warp settings, so like sync, bend, and you could play around with those. They all are very interesting inside C Room. I usually use FM modulation and uh, band and sync. For this square, you could use pulse width modulation so to make it like that. And now we could choose the second waveform. Let's find a nice saw. And sometimes, guys, it's much nicer to use simple waveforms. It's always cool to use some fancy waveforms like FM and uh, other kinds of modulation, but sometimes the simplicity is the key. And let's try and use some FM modulation, but I want to warn you guys, uh, you should not always be using FM, and not all of the cool sounds are made with FM. It's always nice and cool and interesting to try some FM. And we are going to do that just to see if that works. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. Uh, what we could do now, we could use unison. And the blend under the tune, I'm going to keep like that. And now what we need to do, we also need to make sure that the face is set to zero or at 360 and the randomize we also want to set at zero because we don't want any phase cancellations when our kick and bass play together. So make sure that the random is set at zero. And sometimes you could play around with the phase, but I usually use it either at uh, 360 or at zero. 
as you can see, when I've applied the unison mode, the base now became much wider and interesting. And <clears throat> we are now going to use the second envelope and the filter. And for the filter, it's usually very nice to use MG low 24. It's basically like a MOOC filter, that ladder filter. And I'm going to increase the resonance a bit. And now I'm going to apply the second envelope to the filter. You can also try and increase the attack. It usually sounds very nice and interesting. And it also makes your bass a bit softer, which may be very nice in some cases. And now what we could do, we could increase the fat and the drive. And also guys, don't forget to decrease the volume on the master when you boost uh, on the filter. It's very really important. Uh, now uh, I'm going to use mono since it's the bass. We don't want uh, polyphonic and the legato. I usually use it. I usually use the always option and basically that means a glide. Now we could use the first macro to control the cutoff of the filter. You could bend those on your MIDI controller if you want to control the cutoff or resonance or any other parameter of your bass. Now I want to use our second envelope to control the detune of the second oscillator. Basically we are adding some movement to our bass and the more movement you have on your sounds the more interesting it sounds to the listener and in the track. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to do something like that. And the blend I'm going to use as well. Yeah, sounds pretty nice. And I want to add some noise now to just to make our bass a little bit more interesting to spice it up a little. And I'm going to use the first envelope to control the level of the noise. Now guys, I'm going to use the velocity to control the drive of our distortion and the same thing goes to the mix level. So something like that should be very nice. My tip for you guys is try to use the velocity as a modulator for different parameters, maybe for the tune, uh, something else. Just try and use it. When you are using distortion on your bass, you are decreasing the dynamic range. And this is nice because we don't want a lot of dynamics in our bass. We could try maybe use phaser. So guys, that was the first bass. Now we are going to make another one inside Diva. And for this example, I'm going to use this one. You can hear how fat and nice and warm Diva sounds. That's without layering. It just sounds good. And that's the reason why I like this synth so much. 
uh, we need to make sure that our base is in mono i want that glide option as well just a little bit so now we need to find the right balance between the attack and decay and the sustain in this mode you don't have a knob for the release so basically it's the same knob for the release and the decay and sometimes it may work sometimes you could choose the analog this is my favorite one actually digital is good but i just prefer analog Yeah, sounds pretty nice. And now for the sub, we could use some of those very low and fat square waveforms. And now we could start applying the second envelope to our filter. As you can hear guys, I've increased the attack a little. Also try and use LP2, it's 12 dB, so it's a bit softer. Crank the resonance. I think I like the LP4 more. And now the most interesting part comes. Inside Diva, we have a very interesting modulators. So for example, you could try and multiply, let's say envelope two and velocity. Let's try and use lag. And lag, basically it makes the uh, modulator softer. So in this example, I'm gonna be using the envelope two and let's try and make it softer. We could try and maybe use multiply. Let's try and use lag and maybe multiply. Just try and see if we like the sound. And VCO, I'm going to use add. Try to play around here guys, you have a lot of options, you could multiply, you could add, you could, you could quantize and it's very interesting because for example you could invert the, let's say multiply and I'm going to use it to control the FM modulation and the filter, so uh, invert And for the resonance, we could try and use key follow. Yeah, I don't want to dive very deep into those things because the video is going to be too long, but I hope that I could give you an example how you could use those modulators and get a very interesting and fat and warm base inside Tiva.
the sound is very different. I still prefer Diva, but if you guys like Serum more, it's up to you which synthesizer you like to use because they both are great and amazing. That was everything I wanted to talk about, I wanted to share to you guys today. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.